to the history hunter. History hunter here and eagle eyes, eagle eyes with the flashlights and there's a reason for that. This is the area where Hitler himself ordered and commanded build me some massive guns to put on the Atlantic wall and they did. I can promise you some of the biggest guns you've ever seen are right here. But this forest also hides some other secrets and one of them is one of the largest munition bunkers we've ever come across and we're going to find it and we're going to share it with you right now. Let me put this quickly into some context for you. Hitler ordered to build the Atlantic Wall fortification line running from the top of Scandinavia to the bottom of France consisting of tens of thousands of structures. One of the areas that he did was the one that we are at and they had several of these massive guns. All the guns needed special things to be able to fire. They needed munition, they needed a cruise, but they also needed a very safe place to store the munition. So without the munition, there would be no firing and you had to protect the munition in these massive bunkers. And that's where we are today. I'm gonna to show you one of the strongest munition bunkers that was on the Atlantic wall. Hitler himself was involved in the uh, development and the design. And this is a massive beast. Uh, they took about 5,130 cubic meter of concrete to create it. And it was made in what's called ST Stendi or, or in a very heavy duty wall roof addition to be able to protect this. So there's actually a narrow track railroad running through the bunker to be able to supply all the rounds of the munitions. These little boys here, they are all over inside this bunker and it's just an absolutely massive cool thing to see. It's like a dinosaur between bunkers and we are so excited to show this to, to you. This is a result of your incredible support for our latest uh, 10 days road trip that we actually made in full in 10 days. And we visited over 20 locations and we're gonna give you a little preview of what's coming up later. So enjoy and then let's go out and find that bunker. In this forest, there's a lot of features. One of the features that we're gonna show you is very essential for being able to to use these guns to be able to fire them and to be able to try and knock out the enemy vessels out there at the ocean. And to do that, you need an effective system to get your munition from one place to another. And that was taken care of here by a little narrow track railroad. And that narrow track railroad had wagons and on that wagons there were massive, huge gun uh, projectiles. 38, 42 centimeters in diameter and launched thousands and thousands of meters out into the ocean. And that is exactly what took place here. And to do that, you have to also be able to store these huge numbers of munition rounds. And that is what took place in this munition bunker. So somewhere out here, there's a massive bunker that Hitler himself ordered to be put right here. So right in here is a absolutely humongously big munition bunker and right where we're walking that is where the railroad track was. So you can even see some of the bits of railroad track here. It came here in from this area here and right down to this little track right there and let me show you something see that that's just the start of this massive munition bunker are you ready to go in yes. we are come on let's see what's in there it is spectacular to be here it's an honor and pleasure for us to share this with you it's a bit wet here but nevertheless it is what we do and what we like to do and I want to thank each and every one of you for letting us have the opportunity to do this. It's only because of you that we can come to locations like this. Let's find the flashlights and see what the Germans hid right here. We are ready. This entrance area here was normally heavily guarded. And here you can actually see the narrow track railroad beams this this is where the little train ran 
and when they come over to this position here, you can see that thing starts to be a pretty, uh, well, just serious. All right, Eli's asked, why are there so many steel doors? And that is just for protection. And you can see these doors are very heavy duty. They're like an inch plus thick. And they have these massive hinges. The lookout door there, a little hatch. And that is needed because what was in here was one of the biggest investments that the Germans could have. I can feel the air. You can feel the air rush through. Cool. And the biggest investment they had was their munition. The munition was so important. You can see the ventilation here. Why would you ventilate rooms with just munition? That is to keep it dry. And that's the whole point of this bunker, to be able to store munition safely and dry, and at the same time withstand a massive bomb raid from the Allies. And that is why these bunkers are so heavy duty built. This is like two meter plus thick roofs, and I don't know how thick the walls are, but I guess two to three meters. Is that correct, Eli? Yes, I think so. Actually. Yep, right. So what we have are different compartments, just basically rooms. Let me show you. We came in from here. So the train would come in here. And this long over hall, that is so that the whole complete length of the train could be safe under there. Otherwise, they would just needed the little entrance, but in this way, the whole length of the ammunition train would be safe under here. And then they would open the doors, the doors would be opened, and then the driver of the train and the crew would decide where to get munition out from. And if you see here, you can see some hatches and a beam. That's the beam where they loaded on and off the munition. And these doors, they were also to protect the munition stores. As you can see, each compartment here has one door, tons of them over there and each compartment also have two doors. Let me see if I can show you two of these doors in complete condition like that. So they could actually shut every compartment absolutely completely if needed to be able to protect them. There's actually some kind of, uh, no, that's just paint chipping off. Let's have a look inside one of the first compartments. Did you know that you can become a World War II History Hunter team member and the artifacts here could be passed on to you in this manner and fashion here by creating beautiful World War II dioramas and displays, you can be the future keeper of something very, very special by the history and the history hunting that we share together. Check out the link in the video description, you can click that and you can become a patron team member if you want to. Different kind of perks with For Your Eyes Only videos, travel vlogs, restoration projects, all of that good stuff and if you want to know more, check out the supporter videos in the beginning of each month but now let's continue our little adventure so imagine the train coming in here has a huge load of these massive tips like this and that is to supply this gun here yep and then in here that is exactly where each and every round was placed. And if you see there, just like this, see that? You can change direction from going that way or that way. You can even see the original cablings on the top for the uh, lights and the massive ventilation shafts everywhere to get the air flowing here to keep them dry. And actually, even today, you can even hear, can you hear the echo? There's an echo in here. <laughs> That's how long this is. Maybe on this plaque here, it said what type of munition was in here. You can actually hear the echo from my voice. And you have basically just a massive long hall where you will come to the end here. You see all this rust here? That is rust particles coming down from that hoist beam. So 
it seems like it's not too deep. Oop, it is too deep here. <laughs> okay, uh, I can't go there, Igalais. It's too deep. Either sh you, you shouldn't go there as well because it's too deep. So, munition coming in here, all depending on where it goes, it's being switched over there manually, and then whoop, they take the large round transport it all the way down there with a special fixture, set it down, and boom, there it's safe. All right, first compartment there. Coming up here, you can see this is actually the original electrical connectors. It looks original, actually. All right, yeah, like I said, it is original. You can actually spot that. And also, there are miles after miles of cables in the ground here between the different positions. I mean miles after miles. See how far it is to go out there. So this is the second munition storage. So why don't we just go in and have a look. It's just the same as the others. There might have been some kind of sign on the wall. Do you see any writing, Eagle Eyes? Oh, this one has got this kind of little thing standing out here. I think that is probably a room. Can you go out to see if there's a room on the outside? I think that's a room on the outside, is it? So, also water in here. So, ventilation, very important. This one loses a bit of a area for what is a room outside, Eagle Eye says. Let's check that out. So these doors, they were very important. And I guess they also helped to have the right kind of ventilation going back and forth here. So this little room here is the one that was kind of the area that took away some of the, yeah, just a tiny little room here. I'm not sure exactly what the purpose of that was. Could have been a special storage. I'm not sure. But in here, there was a heater room in here. I'm not 100% sure exactly if this is the room. It could very well be that this is the heater room. Let me go and see if there are some. <coughs> yeah, you can see the ventilation shaft coming in there. That's a weird room. No, this is the heater room. Okay. This is where they heated uh, the air before they pushed it into the bunker. And uh, maybe, was there a generator here? I'm not 100% sure. So, I think they had the heater inside here, and then the hot here could flow through these pipes all over the bunker inside. All right, so we have the heater room, we have a couple of munition storages, and then we're coming to a what seems room. to be, oh, that was that room, then we come to a room which also has this door. You can see the lever rod in between the bottom and the top there to actuate both of the handles at the same time. That's cool. This is one door. That is probably to make it quick to shut and open. And then suddenly we have a little variation. This room is separate. You see here? It's like another room that's taking some place or area. And then you have this beam. I think, yeah, they took down the beam. There used to be a beam here. And there used to be the turntable that switches the direction there. And even the side walls, the divider walls are here are pretty, pretty massive actually. Stand there so I can see how wide it is. Yeah, it's uh, eagle eyes width. And you get, wow, the original. Light fixture is there. That is very nice to see. Yeah, it's so nice to see and hope it will stay there for a very long time. Someone welded, let it stay. I don't mind if pieces are rotting on the ground to be able to kind of avoid it for rotting away. I don't mind taking a little piece like that, but I will never detached, you see there, 
as one of the fittings as well. We'll never detach any of the equipment. There's another one. That is very cool. And is that ventilation shot? With concrete? Why is that shot? And is that a... They, this is... All of them are ventilation and someone has shot them. Also here, you can actually see... Hold this, please. Yes. This, this is how they operate them. Of course, you can't do it. See that? Oh, it's stuck. But this one, I'm guessing, it really worked. I think they're going that way. No, you see that? There's a little... Can you put a light up there, please? The big... Could it put, yeah, the, this one, there's a notch there. So you have to kind of push this inwards and then boom down, that's the lock. So you have to, but it's stuck. stuck. But this is basically how that works. So you can see they could shut them and then the whole system would be shut. What part is it, that door? There's, there's some writing there. I'm not sure whether that is original. So how far have we got now? We have got more than halfway in the bunker. You can see the different features. You see the massive... I'm just loving these clamps because they're actually using these type of clamps even today. And they're very sturdy and very, very effective to put together joints. And these massive um, things here are reduced down in size from what comes out there to this one. And then again to the different rooms. But we have another room. This, you can see again, they yeah, shut them. The uh, did it uh, open the door? Let's see. Did you shut that? Yeah. Oh, it still works. Yeah, cool. cool. Cool to see eagle eyes testing and figure out things. That's what it is. This one has just absolutely rusted off the hinges, so be careful. Don't step close to it. Don't, don't touch it, don't touch it. It can fall over you. Don't touch it. No. If you stand there and that falls over you, it's it will hurt you. So be very careful. Always have to be very careful. Tiny little room. The ventilation is actually open. And you have the cablings. The light was taken, that's too bad. The graffiti guys has been here. So as I said, I'm not sure, is this a, like a crew quarter inside? Haven't actually got a clue about that. I just love this hallway. It is so exciting. You know, I think here? all of this was actually once upon a time ventilation and somehow someone actually casted them shut. For why? I haven't got a clue. And then suddenly, you have also massive ventilation right there. And the doors on this side. This is absolutely fantastic. And this thing is heavy duty built. Yes, these guns were the, some of the biggest that Hitler had available on the Atlantic Wall, and I have to say it was a pleasure and honor to be able to do this. It's just because of your kind support by your Patreon team member, sign up, pay, um, PayPal donations, and this super thanks feature, as I told you, this thing here, which actually enables us to put some gasoline into the tank, go out and explore more, and I can promise you, you will enjoy some of the newest material that's coming up in the near future. There's a very special detail here. I'm not 100% sure whether that is real, but that is special. I think it is. Yep, he can do it. He can do it. Oh my God. Goodness, this is complete without any graffiti or crap. See what is here? That's a original German wine bottle in this Robo 2 bunker. I actually found it. Holy pancake. And it's above ground. Yep, that's exactly what it is all about. Us going out, doing the research, traveling to these locations and sharing incredible World War II history with you. And it's an honor and a pleasure, as I said, 
to do that. All right, we'll meet you out there in the next one. Stay safe, keep smiling, and uh, see you later.